everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to convert the general form of a rational function into its standard form. So, in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, which is Convert Rational Function General to Standard Form. So, in today's lesson, this is what we want to accomplish. Given the rational function in general form, how are we going to convert to standard form? Well, to provide a bit of insight into the procedure, take a look at our rule and think about what is actually happening between the numerator and the denominator. In fact, if you think about it for a second, there's a division going on here. Remember, a fraction means numerator divided by denominator. And in fact, this is exactly how we're going to handle converting to standard form. We're going to perform the division. But how do we perform the division? Easy. You may have already been exposed to polynomial long division, where we have one polynomial divided by another polynomial. And that's all it's really going to take. But before we actually perform a long division on a rational function written in general form, I'd like to first take a look at regular long division between two integers and observe how we get our result. For example, suppose I asked you, what is the result of 7 divided by 2? Well, everyone knows that that equals to 3.5. But the big question is, how do we actually get that it's 3.5? Well, let's observe how the long division is performed when we have 7 divided by 2. Well, doing our long division procedure, we get that the closest number multiplied by 2 to give us 7 is 3. 3 times 2 gives us 6. And that leaves us a remainder of 1. Now, here's where the magic happens. This means that 7 divided by 2 is, in fact, 1 over 2 plus the 3. The 1 comes from our remainder. The 2 comes from our divisor. And the 3 comes from our result at the top over here. Some of you may have been exposed to the way we put this answer together, and some of you may have not. But it does work. Let's take a look at another example of this. Suppose I give you 5 divided by 4. And I'm sure that many of you know that this is equal to 1.25. But how do we actually arrive at that 1.25? Well, let's take a look at the long division. 5 divided by 4. So the closest integer multiplied by 4 that gives us 5 will be 1, because 1 times 4 gives 4, and giving us a remainder of 1. And take a look at how we put our answer together. That means that 5 divided by 4, in fact, gives us 1 over 4 plus 1, which is, in fact, 1.25. The 1 in the numerator comes from our remainder. The 4 in the denominator comes from our divisor. And the plus 1 comes from our, our result at the top over here. How does this long division procedure extend to polynomial long division? Well, let's take a look at an actual conversion example. Convert y equals 3x plus 5 over x minus 2 into standard form. So we're going to set up our long division. We have 3x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. Your normal long division procedure will tell you that the closest integer that multiplies by x minus 2, giving us as close a result to 3x plus 5 as possible, would be 3. So that goes up top. 3 times x minus 2 gives us 3x minus 6. And when I do my subtraction, I get 5 subtract negative 6, which gives us a remainder of 11. And therefore, 
our final result in standard form is in fact simply just y equals 11 over x minus 2 plus 3 with the 11 coming from the remainder the x minus 2 coming from the divisor and the plus 3 coming from the result up top over here and if you look at our final result it is written perfectly in standard form it's almost truly magical how this happens by itself let's take a look at another example suppose I asked you to convert the following rational function from general form to standard form First, let's set up our long division so we have 7x plus 3 divided by 2x minus 6. Now, there's something that you have to do during the conversion process that you wouldn't normally have to do during normal, regular polynomial long division. You have to make sure that you get rid of the 7x. That means that you have to find a number that when multiplied by 2x gives you 7x. And yes, this means sometimes that you can end up with decimal numbers or even worse fractions in this case we do end up with a fraction because the only number that when multiplied by 2x gives us 7x is 3.5 or in other words 7 over 2 so when we remultiply we get 7 over 2 times 2x which gives us our 7x and that's what will help us eliminate the 7x and 7 over 2 times negative 6, in fact, gives us negative 21. And when we do our subtraction, as you can see, the x is gone, leaving us with simply 3 subtract negative 21, which is 24. So our rule in standard form is y equals 24 which comes from our remainder over 2x minus 6 which comes from our divisor plus 7 over 2 and this is in fact written perfectly in standard form additionally if your teacher demands it then this can be further simplified y equals 24 and the denominator 2x minus 6 can be factored into 2 multiplied by x minus 3 plus 7 over 2. And 24 over 2 does in fact reduce, and our final result, fully reduced, is 12 over x minus 3 plus 7 over 2. Again, this is if your teacher demands that you give the fully simplified expression. I think it's time for you guys to try one on your own. So, get the following example down, please. Convert y equals 8x minus 5 over 2x plus 6 to standard form. Go ahead, pause the video, and try it now. Alright, let's see how you guys did. So first, I'm going to set up my long division. 8x minus 5 divided by... 2x plus 6. So, we have 8x divided by 2x, which luckily is a nice clean integer, but keep in mind it could be messy. In this case, I just have 4. Remultiplying, I get 4 times 2x, which is 8x. And 4 times 6 gives us positive 24. We do our subtraction. The x's are gone, and that's what's important in the conversion process. This is something you don't have to think about sometimes when we do just normal polynomial long division. And negative 5 subtract 24 gives us negative 29. Therefore, our rule in standard form is negative 29, which comes from the remainder, over... 2x plus 6, which comes from our divisor, and finally, plus 4. But, 
if in case you need to draw this, that means you would need to reveal the true h. Don't forget to factor out the um, 2 in the expression 2x plus 6. So that can give us negative 29 over 2 times x plus 3 plus 4, thereby revealing that the true h is in fact negative 3. Remember, you need to do this only if you need to draw it to reveal the true h. That's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to converting the general form of a rational function to its standard form.